What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So it's been a bit since we talked about the extension extrusion tools and I wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the things you can do with this tool set as well as some different times when this tool set might be the right choice. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can download extrusion tools from the SketchUcation extension warehouse. Um, this is an extension by TIG. I will link to it in the notes down below. But basically this is a tool set for creating creating and extruding different shapes. But one of the things I like about this is it does it by edges. And so what that means is that means you can extrude different edges. So for example, right now, if I was to draw an edge like this, you can't push pull it, right? The push pull tool doesn't allow you to push pull edges. Um, I would hope that at some point they actually add that functionality, but at the moment you can't do that unless you use extrusion tools. So what extrusion tools does is it allows you to select edges and create extrusions from them. So if I was to select this edge, and then select the option for extrude edges by vector, what that would allow me to do is that would allow me to extrude this up and create a face just like this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the space key and it's always gonna ask if you wanna reverse the faces and if you wanna explode the group, which I'm gonna say no. And so the cool thing about this is not only does this work on singular edges, this also works on multiple edges. So if I was to select these edges, for example, I can hold the shift key to lock them to the blue axis and I could extrude these up. So these are very helpful for extruding edges like this. And another cool thing about this is unlike a lot of extensions, it doesn't require you to weld curves, which isn't really that big of a deal anymore, just because um, they added the ability to weld curves inside of the newest version of SketchUp. But um, you can select these edges and notice their individual curves and you can still extrude them up. So if I was to extrude them by vector like this, you can see how I could extrude that up no problem. And so what this does is this gives you a really interesting tool set for being able to create more organic type shapes, right? Because previously you'd have to like draw this and then um, you'd have to give it some thickness and then extrude that up, which you didn't always want to do and things just start getting really complicated. But let's say for example that we were to create a sandbox. So we'll just create a simple sandbox like this one. And let's say that you had a bunch of complex um, curves in this, right? So let's say we were to move this up. So you've got like a corner right here, you know, something a little bit more organic like this, right? So you could use sandbox in order to create that. But then if you needed to add like walls or something like that, things start getting really complicated again, right? So for example, if I wanted to come in here and create a wall that kind of ran along like somewhere in the middle of this object, it would get really hard to do. So you could come in here and let's go ahead and rough out just like a floor plate real quick. So if you were gonna do this just by the edges, you could do that just with native tools, right? You could make this flat edge, but you know, if you had something that was more organic, right? Like a curve or something like that, right? Things start getting really complicated really fast. You know, you could push pull this up, but you can't like draw a line straight up like this, right? And you know, create a face. It just doesn't work that way because things aren't on the same plane, right? So it doesn't automatically fill in a plane or anything like that. But with extrusion tools, there's a tool in here called Extrude Edges by Vector to Object. I've talked about it on the channel before. I absolutely love this tool. What this does is this takes a curve. So let's say I wanted to select these edges and I wanted to extrude them up. It'll find an intersection point with another object and it'll create a face that runs along that. So in this situation, for example, I could extrude this up and notice how I get all of these red dots. Well, these red dots are this extension finding where this intersects with this object. Well, if I click in here, we'll say no, we'll say no. What this'll do is this'll create faces in here based on this curve. So what we've done is we've created a complex organic shape with a wall that runs up to that shape. And then you can couple this with other extensions, like for example, joint push pull would be a good one to give this a little bit of thickness. So let's say I was to take this whole face and use Fredo's joint push pull. I could do a vector push pull to give it a little bit of thickness. 
Make sure that your finishing is set to thicken to keep your face there. But you could add thickness to the shape as well. So you can use this to create like really cool organic shapes. All right, so in addition, if you use this right, you can use it to create really complex lattices inside of SketchUp as well. So let's say, for example, that we were to draw a curve. So we'll just draw a curve that goes along a path, kind of like this. Right, so we've got a curve right here. And so there's a tool in here called Extrude Edges by Rails to Lattice. And so there's a problem with that tool though. So let's say, for example, that we were to draw a couple different edges in here, and these basically correspond to the size of my window openings that I want. So let's say we were creating a complex curtain wall system, right? So first thing we need to do is we need to weld these edges together because this one only works with curves. Right, so what we need to do in this situation, and this is cool in SketchUp 2020, they added the ability to weld at uh, multiple edges into curves. So I'm just gonna right click, and I'm gonna click on the button for weld edges here, and then I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna weld these edges here, right? So weld edges. So now if I click on these and look in my entity info, these both show up as curves. So this is a curve, this is a curve. So what we want to do is we want to start by using this extrude edges by rails to lattice. So basically what that's going to do is that's going to let us set a profile, which in this case is going to be this curve. There's a first rail. And then if you wanted a second rail, you could have it in here. If you don't, you can just click on this again. Then it's going to ask for a melding profile. That's if you wanted your curve to transition into another curve, which we don't. So we're just going to click on this right here. And so it's going to ask if we want to create a lattice from, and we're going to say lattice from profiles and rails and click on OK. We want to select lattice as 3D and click on OK. And then it's going to ask if we want to erase coplanar edges. We go ahead and say yes on that one. And it's going to ask if we want to reverse the faces. In this case, I'm going to say yes. So then it's going to ask us if we want to create a lattice. Well, in this situation, we do. What a lattice is, is this is going to take each face and offset it in and create like a glass system. So we're going to click on OK. And what that's going to do, and we're going to say no to erase original curves, is that's going to create a lattice system in here. And so you can also set this so that that lattice has glass in it. So like, for example, if we were to run this again, which we can do, say yes, 3D erase coplanar edges. You want to do that, otherwise you get these diagonals in here and your lattice doesn't look right. But what we want to do in this situation is we'll set our pane material to glass. So what that's going to do is that's going to set this lattice so that it has a glass inside of it. So if you look at this, and we're not going to erase our original curves, you can see how you can use this in order to create a glass surface in here. And so in addition, we can also use an extension called Lattice Maker from TIG in order to create a lattice from our building. And I will link to that in the notes down below. And so there's some other interesting applications. We could talk about this uh, kind of theoretically more than anything. So one thing that's gonna make this a little bit weird is notice how the segments in your arc affect the size of the faces that are created. So if you were to pay a little bit more attention to the size of those uh, segments, then you could use this in order to create some glass in here just by using the extension Lattice Maker, also from TIG. So, and I'll just show you how I would do this in general. Just note that you would want to adjust these edges right here before you did the extrude to faces up here. But let's say that we wanted to split this up into some glass, right? So what I would do in this situation, because what this has done is this is taken, and let's go ahead and let's hide this face right here, just so we can see a little bit better. And we'll turn off our hidden geometry, there we go. So what I wanna do is I wanna take the edges around the perimeter here, so the ones that are kind of making up this face, and I want to select them. So it's probably easier if I hide this as well. So if I was to select this object and then select the base like this, so basically what I've done is I've selected all of these edges, I could use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy of this and split these faces, right? So I could click up here, and then I can just type in like divided by three 
or something like that. And what I've done is I've basically split this up into a number of different panes, right? And the way this is created, if we look at our hidden geometry, there's no triangles on here, meaning that this is going to create nice geometry if we were to use Lattice Maker. So Lattice Maker is a free extension from TIG, which I will link to in the notes down below. But basically it takes faces and it creates glass faces from those or lattices you don't necessarily have to have glass in them but I almost always do so the way that would work is I would just select all of these and then I would just run lattice maker like this and you could set this to add a glass pane um, on every one of these so what this would do is this would offset these in and basically create a pane of glass at every one of these faces so I could click on OK, and what that's going to do, and you might get some weird results on these faces right here, but what that's going to do is that's going to go through and that's going to create a lattice using every one of these faces. So you could use this in order to really quickly create like a curtain wall face in here. Notice how this gets a little bit weird when this gets smaller. So like I said, you'd want to pay more attention to your segment count over here, but overall you could use this to create some very complex curtain wall shapes that kind of contour to organic shapes like this inside of SketchUp. So I'm not even really sure what to call this kind of tutorial. It's almost like a concepts video, but it shows you some interesting applications for a tool that you could then take and apply to more specific shapes. So um, you could take these and you could do a lot of interesting things with this. So I would love to hear from you in the comments some stuff that you might do with using extensions like this. Um, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.